Hi, I'm going to work on this uh, activity dealing with similarity. I'm going to do the first problem on the handout. So we have three right triangles. They all look kind of the same. But the question here is, are any triangles similar, right? And let's see if we can identify um, which pair perhaps might be similar and then justify it, right? Talk about why that is the case. So we definitely have to look at length. So the number one thing you might want to do is to calculate the lengths of the sides. And remember on the geo board, um, any horizontal or vertical uh, movement is just counted as one. So I'm just going to count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six. I see a six here. And this looks like four as the height. And let's count. It looks like we have seven here. And this is exactly one bigger than that four, so that's a five. And let's check, so this is definitely going to be a six, and I will have to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So again, we are counting um, the actual line segments between the pegs. Okay, so um, I might be tempted to take this triangle as the reference and to see, uh, sort of ask, are, the, uh, are any of these similar to that one? Um, but remember, it could be that these two are similar, right? So there's a lot of different things to check. Um, so I suspect um, this is a little trick here, right? Triangle one to triangle two. So you can see to go from four to five, you would have to add one. Um, and to go from six to seven, you'd have to add one. So I talked about in the earlier video that uh, when we talk about similarity, the connection is not additive, right? So most likely, um, uh, we can tell here that these two triangles are not similar. So I might just um, write a couple of notes here. So 4 to 5, um, 6 to 7. So we're comparing um, the corresponding sides, right? So this looks like a plus 1 relationship, so um, we don't have similarity. So what I might try now is to keep the first one and to check it with the third. So the connection would be here, um, 6, right, becomes 9. 4 becomes 6. So I'll write those out. So we should look at this and say, aha, right? We can definitely see something, right? So 4 times 1 is 4, which is not quite um, this here. 4 times 2 is 8, right? Which again is not this, but you can tell 6 is right in between the 4 and the 8. Um, the same thing happens here, right? 6 times 1 is 6. It's not 6. 6 times 2 is 12, that's not 12, but 9 is right in between um, 6 and 12. So it appears here that this is a multiplicative relationship, 1 and a half, right? So you would have to take all of 4 and then half of it, which is 2, and that would give you the 6. Um, so I'll put an asterisk here because it appears um, triangle 1 and triangle 3, right? That these are similar. And the scale factor, if you're using this one as the reference, is going to be one and a half, right? So we could say here, scale factor is 1.5. As a fraction, right, we write that as 3 halves. Um, keep in mind, if you go the opposite direction, right, so if we're going to go this way, then our scale factor is not going to be three halves, but it's going to be two thirds, right? So everything is going to be reversed. So the scale factor will be two thirds of going from the largest one to the smallest one. Just a quick little check, right? Uh, take nine as your reference. If you take nine times two thirds, you get 18 thirds or six, right? So the nine here is gonna take you to the six. Very similar here, six times the two thirds it's going to uh, take you to 12 thirds, aka 4, right? So it does work in both directions. Um, so that answers the question, right? The similar ones are uh, triangle A and triangle C. Uh, now there's one more thing I want to talk about here because this uh, talks about the importance of similarity and the fact that it affects all sides. So you'll remember from earlier lessons that you could get the hypotenuse of each side here, um, or you could get the hypotenuse of each triangle. So I'm going to leave sort of the details to you, but I'll write it down here. Uh, this one will be square root 52, square root 74, square root 117. 
So the important thing to see, right, and it's good to just kind of see this happen, is that this connection, right, this uh, relationship with similarity will hold even with these sides, right? So you should be able to see this, um, uh, this connection of one and a half show up. So I'm going to uh, do a little bit of math here so we can see this. So we already know, right, it's triangles A and C that are the similar ones. So do the math, right? If you look at square root 52, you might remember some of this math, right? You can split it up here as the product of these two, right? And then we can write this. And the square root of 4 is 2. So we get this measurement for the longest length, right, in the first triangle. Um, now, because we know C is similar, uh, the math is going to look almost the same. So 117, you might need to play with that a little bit. 117 is 9 times 13. And look at this math. Okay, so split this up. So this is the hypotenuse of triangle C. Uh, so hopefully here you can sort of see the connection, right? So we're using like that square root 13 as your benchmark and you can see the 2, 3 connection, right? The scaling. So that is the exact same relationship we see with the integer sides, right? The ones that didn't end up as square roots. Um, so that 2 to 3, right? Um, you can see that same thing in the scale factor.